for the people that are coming in. I would like to ask everyone to sit a little bit in the front to have a nice discussion together. So I think it's going to be really great to finish this day off uh, in this way. Some sort of conclusions at the end of the day. Um, and I would like to introduce Knight for Hoover. He's going to be leading uh, this discussion. Uh, you are the director of the engineer office of the municipality of uh, Amsterdam. Um, so you can mention she's uh, as well. And, uh, Deborah is also a part of this panel. So if you have like, some minutes uh, of my own introduction, enjoy for the last part. We, uh, we are going to start with a quick introduction. Uh, do we need to do it in English or shall we do it in Dutch? I don't think we can do English. Right, we, we only need one and we do it in the uh, game. I'm a uh, director of uh, the uh, Office of Engineering. We are responsible for all the times you have to take a detour which will buy in the public space. And a lot of moving of soil. And a, uh, and a lot of things in the underground you can see, but I can look up to the so. And you're here without a bodyguard. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Take him. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, okay. Deborah, I think. Uh, yeah. um, oh, yes. I'm Deborah Solomon. I'm the founder of uh, Urbania Mubo, which means the city of our, as our farmyard. We've been working since uh, 2010 with uh, residents and local municipalities to transform public space into climate adaptive food bearing for humans and more than human locations. Uh, we uh, actively do uh, biodiversity uh, increase in these public spaces. And I'm also uh, doing a PhD on this subject in uh, the Department of Urban Planning uh, with a focus on a case study in Amsterdam Zuid Oost, which is a 56 hectare food forest in the public space with uh, all different kinds of uh, residents, uh, age 22 to 82. And uh, we have this beautiful uh, footprint of this project, which links the ecological framework from outside the city through the Kahavir, the K district of Amsterdam South Oost to the Nelson Mandela Park. Uh, I don't think you need an introduction because most people have been here. So I will just start the discussion. Is that the word with you? Uh, I have noticed there have been a lot of perspective about this uh, Japanese knotweed today. Uh, and also I've heard in the last discussion maybe a few perspectives just uh, are just still missing. So what I would like to ask you, um, what did you learn, but more so, what will you change in your approach? I will ask you one by one, and then we'll start the discussion. So can I clarify them a little bit maybe? Uh, what do we mean? Learn from the other talks? We have exchanged a lot of perspectives, sure. so I think, uh, I hope, uh, <laughs> yes, we'll be a little bit changed and more perspective will change a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I can also say nothing. Okay. All right. of what they notice around themselves or how they observe a plant and it all largely depends on how you can deal with it of course what your background is and how it affects your daily functioning as well I mean if it doesn't affect you you may not even notice it being there is that not something I knew, more? I knew that before and I think it merely highlights that there are all different aspects to a plant or to an organism or to any functionality. And when it comes to Japanese knotweed or what we call Japanese knotweed, any of these <coughs> Asian 
not good, it's in an urban setting or in a natural setting. People should be aware there's no single solution. It needs to be tailor-made and all different aspects need to be taken into consideration before you take a decision at a particular site. And that is something that people really should realize. It's not black and white that it was most of the time preferred a single solution to solve the problem. That's not possible. You have to learn to live with it. And to come to a solution, you have to consult all parties involved at that particular site to come to an agreement to reach a long sustaining solution, whatever that may be. And it will be site dependent whether that solution is a solution. Um, well, what I learned today is that many, many people already do know a lot about Japanese Muslim. Uh, I thought we were sending messages into the world without many people being receptive for it, but I see also, because many people are here now and because of the thing I heard, many people already do know, so that gives me a really positive feeling. Uh, in, and I also think that everybody who, who is foraging is already known with the, with the risks of spread uh, and I hope that they take uh, our advice uh, in council uh, uh, to, to maintain that. Um, but I do hope that we can in the future uh, decrease our efforts uh, putting so much money in it with the help of natural uh, predators, with the help of uh, uh, foragers, uh, with the help of our own people, and de skill our efforts and uh, uh, reach a state of balance. And evolution will take many, many, many years before that balance is reached. So I think we still do have a job to do. But I have a positive feeling about this. Uh, oh, we can only have one. Um, what I learned, I uh, was fascinated by every single uh, speaker. It was uh, beautiful to hear uh, these uh, historical narratives. Uh, to even think of the, the scientific narratives that were presented throughout the day and that evolved very sensibly in the uh, progression of speakers. I thought it was uh, amazing. Um, in terms of what I had learned, um, I have learned that to take a, a whole species, a whole ecosystem approach, that there's a lot of work to be done to um, disseminate the notion that ecology is not separate from society, from governance. I, I'm kind of putting what happened to me yesterday uh, into this, what I learned today. I sat at a table with um, um, people from Scots there for the Department of Public Works Green uh, discussing the food forest in Zaudost. And we realized that we were having a communication struggle that really around, uh, uh, was raised around the subject of contracts, contracts for uh, public green maintenance of an external maintenance company, um, what was inside and outside this areal. And uh, that just struck home to me once again how much governance and uh, regulation, our notions of uh, integrated sciences and interdisciplinarity, how that all works together to come to solutions. So I think there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of inspiring examples all around that were brought together by people in this panel, and um, I'm also very positive. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, difficult uh, to add anything to what has been said already. Um, uh, yeah, I started saying what an inspiring environment. Um, and, and I think what I've learned is uh, how impressed I was when I received the invitation 
to take part in this uh, in this day. I didn't know what it was about, what what the audience would be, and and, and whether there would be people interested in uh, in talking about Japanese novel for two days. And then I found that actually this is a festival for, for a month, two months. Amazing. Um, and so I, I I realized that I'm working in a bubble often. Um, talking to like-minded people, and, and then we say, oh, we said, wouldn't it be great if we have a discussion, whilst always bearing in mind that what we think is a solution today may not be a solution tomorrow. And, and I, I was really excited when I heard about how I knew that at the time when 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 bought the plant, everybody said, oh, wow, 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 it was fantastic, nothing wrong with it, and yes, maybe we flipped too far the other way around, um, but I think the realization is important that you keep having your ears and your eyes open and listening to. Um, I think Jaiko, what you explained about, I knew Amsterdam was doing a lot, but I never realized how much is being done. And actually with, with well, gradual success, if, if, I, if I understand it correctly. So listening to each other, understanding what everybody is doing, I think there is a great wealth um, uh, having had this, this symposium, and I would just hope that more of these events will happen because learning from each other is actually the only way forward. But, yeah, I think that's my contribution. Julia, I think I'm going to in the Netherlands. I'm going to go to the Netherlands. I'm going to go to the Netherlands. Ik kreeg de uitnodiging, ik was ook heel erg verrast van die uitnodiging. Ik voelde me ook heel erg vereerd. Dank u trouwens voor uh, Jip en uh, Mathilde voor uh, de, de heel leuke communicatie. Ik heb natuurlijk niet gevraagd naar de presentaties van de collega's spreken. Ik dacht aan u gewoon vanuit heel mijn eigen ervaring proberen de synthese te maken vanuit mijn loopbaan bij Natuur en Bot in Vlaanderen. Sinds een aantal jaren als gepensioneerde, maar met een klein bedrijf dat ik helemaal vrij kan filosoferen of werken rond de thema's die, me, die, 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 die ik leuk vond. En waar dat invasieve duizend, of invasieve landplanten en dan de Japanse duizend nog mij heel erg boeien. Uh, en wat mij vandaag, en dat hoor ik ook, ik heb ergens in mijn presentatie gezegd dat ik wel uit Vlaanderen, en ik moet dat ondertussen op de naam letterlijk nemen. Ik heb de presentaties uh, gezien en ik ben heel erg verrast door de, de overlaps. Er is geen copy-paste gebeurd, maar ik ben enorm, dus ik denk, wat heb ik nu geleerd van dat we los van elkaar toch inderdaad die rode draad gevonden hebben. De communicatie met uh, het veld, ja. ik werk dan veel met de stad Geel. De stad Geel en de stad van Amsterdam hebben blijkbaar een gemeenschappelijke rode draad zijn. De, ja, van ze duizend knoop. <laughs> dus ik vind, dat, ik vind dat geweldig. Ten verhaal neem ik in elk geval mee terug naar Vlaanderen. Uh, dus ik ben heel erg, heel erg uh, aangenaam verrast. Het was meer dan de moeite. Ik hou niet van PowerPoint presentaties maken. Ik hou helemaal niet van uh, spreekwoord en helemaal niet in het Engels. Maar het was absoluut de moeite. En wat heb ik geleerd? Uh, ik ik ben een aantal pistes aan het exploreren en dat is om het gerustgesteld iets meer gerustgesteld zal blijven die pistes verder verkennen. En hopelijk dat daar achteraf nog communicatie uit komt, wat langs alle kanten positieve effecten zal, zal hebben. Voilà. Het is een mooie positieve antwoorden. Robert, heb je, heb je toch nog een aanvulling? Nou, ik heb tijd om te denken. So thank you for that. No, no, I, of course, I, I, I think agree with many of the points. I, I don't want to add too much on that. I also very much enjoyed that there was a whole festival dedicated to Japanese knotweed. When I first started talking about Japanese knotweed in public or to interested parties, I always found people to be very negative. And then some people may be turning a little bit, and some people are all, just always positive. That that's all. That's always the case. But I found it to be mostly negative. And, um, I, I've noticed that throughout the years this has been changing a little bit. I'm looking at this room today, I'm, I'm speaking to many people. I also get more 
positive vibes towards this plan. I also get more of this is a layered problem. This is not an easy fix problem. Um, and, 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 so, and I also hope that there, because I do think there's a little bit of a divide. On the one hand, I very much hear control, health, safety. And on the other solution. hand, solution. Uh, and also how much it costing a, a economical damage, ecological damage, uh, and on the other hand, and maybe I'm on that divide a little bit too, uh, I also hear some positive things about uh, gathering not wheat, eating not wheat, uh, uh, seeing how important it also can be in an ecological system or in urban, urban nature. Uh, so I notice a bit of a divide. I'm not sure if that's true for the room as well. If there's a bit of a divide of you know, positive and negative emotions towards this time. And I'm just interested to see all these types of, all these types of reactions. You're positive about today and what you what you've seen and what you've learned, what you heard. Uh, what 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 has missed today? What was missing? The sun. <laughs> Some warmth, warmth. Maybe it's something. I wasn't here this morning, so I might go off this completely. Um, but maybe the international perspective in terms of how European-wide there are um, efforts to not or uh, do control. Um, and I think it's an, that would be interesting. Maybe Johan can add. Maybe you've mentioned it this morning. I don't know. But in, in, in the European Union, there is a policy about invasive alien species, as they call it, um, um, and um, it has a list. And when a, a species is on the list, it means that a country is obliged to make a management plan and to make sure that there is prevention as far as possible, that there is uh, eradication where possible, and there is control uh, where there's no other opportunity. And um, Japanese knotweed is not on that list. Um, and I think it is, on the one hand, um, I'm, I'm, to be honest, maybe this is super controversial. I'm a great fan of the European project because I think it just makes sense to do things together that you all need to do. Anyway, the, but then let me put that first because not everybody will agree to that. But following that line of thinking, if it is, there are many European countries that are really, really struggling with this species um, and are trying all sorts of things and, and, and in different ways. And um, so, so I'm thinking if we can learn from each other in the Netherlands, how valuable would it be if we also looked into the international context um, and, and see how, how we could work <coughs> together, or how at least we can exchange information. There are some sites, there are some websites that do exchange information, but I think they are not so well known. Um, and, and, and maybe an events like this, where the public really gets engaged and informed, and where there is a debate, and where there's pro and there's anti, this is really good. Because then uh, you, you can make an informed decision about wh what you need to do. Um, and maybe, might, maybe this is an example for how this could be done elsewhere as well. Um, but maybe that is something that is on the table tomorrow, I don't know. But this international perspective, perhaps, and the legislation side of things. Right. Yeah, well, I, I merely mentioned it because I was afraid I would lose the public when going into detail. I did mention that there's this European legislation and the limit in about the Japanese not only let's say the three species being uh, in Dutch legislation now being prohibited to, to sell, transport, or whatever that's unique to the Netherlands. And then I mentioned the European legislation for they not wheat, and not the ones are regulated in the Netherlands. But, um, and likewise, risk assessment, how it's, what it's all about. And in, the, um, in the end, it's a political choice. I did not go into the Uh, no, 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 no. But I mean, for me also, it was difficult to um, 
to make, well, I had to make a choice what I would be tweeting, anticipating what might be uh, expected or digestible for the audience. And it's always easier to, when a question comes, to go into the detail, like the one Mats came up with, with the OED levels. Of, uh, I mean, I had initially had a slide on it, but then I thought I will lose 99% of the audience when I start talking about this. If there would have been a question from the public, I would have gone into detail on European legislation and why not because it's not in there. Because the initial idea of European legislation was to focus on those invasive species that are not yet widely established. So as we can focus on prevention rather than management. And gradually, with the update of the union list, we've added, been adding species. Well, I've not been adding, let's say the uh, European governments have been adding, the European Commission has been adding species that are already widely established as well. Because we do not have to really eradicate them, but at least you have to make an effort to manage them. And in case you do not manage, you have to justify why you can't manage them. Uh, just an, an interesting ecological concept that I, I, I stumbled across uh, uh, last year is the novel ecosystem. Some, some ecologists have been saying that uh, Ecosystems, especially, I mean, we see many pictures, and sometimes people say nature, because sometimes say urban context, but what we oftentimes see is, is all heavily manipulated, heavily changed nature. And in pristine nature, not so much around anymore. And this idea of novel ecosystems, especially true for urban sites, that we find so many foreign exotic species uh, 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 coming together in, in, in city, in urban areas. So I think that is an interesting concept to look at. Uh, perhaps we should maybe focus all the way, all too much on, you know, just protecting native flora versus uh, exotic uh, species. And also because the whole idea of exotic versus native, and this is maybe more of a philosophical point, is this whole distinction is based on the fact if it's introduced by humans or not, which places humans outside of nature, which I find very problematic. So you say something is native if it's natural environment. Uh, you know, it's natural habitat, that's where it lives. If we, so for instance, if I walk through a meadow and I take a little seed on my, on my pant leg, and this plant is specifically adapted for this seed to stick to fur on my pant leg, and I cross the country to Belgium, it's an exotic? Isn't that strange? So I find this whole notion of this whole divide, native exotic, is, a, is getting a bit problematic because it places humans outside of nature. Only our actions involve exotic species. Uh, uh, and that's, that's, just, that's just very strange, especially to a plant biologist, uh, because plants migrate quite extensively uh, and don't stay in one spot, same as animals. Okay. I'm talking too long. Okay. Uh, can we then assign a new term to that? Uh, I, I totally think you raise a very important point, but I think there is still room to talk about these I don't know what the word is if we're not going to use invasive exotics, but they're still, still problematic plants. Uh, and they still did get introduced by nature, be it a natural process. Should we still use terms for this? Or, or is it merely assigning a term already uh, making a distinction where we should review it more holistically? Okay, I'll that I'd like to, uh, to uh, We have, uh, we have yeah. um, uh, biology, our Taxonomic sciences are, we have uh, our taxonomy for biology. Um, these are, in the West, is developed in a period of uh, deep colonization. And uh, concepts in this period, uh, science as we all know is provisional. But right now, this is our vocabulary. That, this is the vocabulary that we use to uh, name species in families. We, uh, uh, science is produced on single species. If you're involved in soil science, you'll know. Like we develop whole cameras that have uh, that lenses focus on uh, single species in soils, in with scanning electron microscopes where where uh, that one species is in a jungle of other species, but the camera and the way the science 
literal, the literal science lens is not designed to see the diversity in that course. This is not to indict or throw away this uh, vocabulary because it has some, and it is our only at this moment discursive method. We cannot throw it away. However, we need to be aware that we um, that it is uh, completely marinated in racism, <laughs> to use a polite word, and uh, and uh, colonization. And we need to decolonize our own sciences. Science is provisional. We need to be developing uh, broader vocabularies, in my opinion, not just my opinion, that um, bring these understandings. Uh, to the fore. Uh, also, that sciences, as I mentioned before, commenting that uh, one silo of science does not exist in a bubble either. There is no biology and without philosophy, without also with uh, the way we handle historical na narratives. These are evolving things, and we need uh, to look with these multi lenses at the multi-species that uh, make up or, yeah, our environments. There's a, a, I'll just say one little thing regarding this urbanization, there's the notion of planetary urbanization also brought forward also by the Fed and that all things have been urbanized for quite a long time. That, uh, well, maybe yeah, we are busy, capitalism is busy with urbanization. It is busy with moving materials from one place to another. Uh, the building is the food sources, your cow, the cow feed of the milk that you drank comes from somewhere. It's, things are not uh, from one place. Typically, these pictures are from cities from Nagasaki to Leiden, rather than yeah. in Asia. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's actually the, the cities are these hotspots of biodiversity from where you, you see the jokes happening. Actually, but, you know, okay, to, to, to come back to your, to, be, yeah. to, to come back to your question. So, yes, there is, so there was a, a famous article in Nature a couple of years ago by many ecologists that sort of criticized the use of the word exotic in exotic, invasive exotics and said that we need to focus more on invasiveness and not so much on the exotic side because it's a very uh, tense field to, to, you know, to, to, bring this, uh, to, to bring this distinction to the forefront. It's very difficult also. Uh, the lines are blurred, etc. And then regarding invasiveness, an interesting thing is there's a great uh, English ecologist, uh, Jonathan Silvertown, who said every plant species every animal species harbors a Darwinian demon, meaning every species in its evolutionary history has been, has needed to be prolific and successful in order to survive, and has needed to be also invasive in order to survive. So that, and that's I think where it becomes interesting. So we say invasive is a successful prolific species. Well, all the species we see around us have been in the past and are maybe still being, maybe less so by our workings, but have been prolific and successful in order to survive. So I think that's a very, so yeah, it's very complicated in ecology to have a new word for this, because both invasive and exotic very latent terms, uh, especially from a more philosophical approach, maybe. I think in the past, we always try to, for public space, or at least uh, the urban space, neat and, and, and clean, and if you said it before, uh, uh, no weeds, no, no, no rubbish around, and I think this is the future, and I think all the cities uh, are doing the same at this moment. Uh, more and more, we have to keep things in balance so that invasiveness doesn't get a chance. It gets a chance in in a clean city where there is no no conquistation, no no natural predators, and this is truly the the the, the, the future also because of the changing of the climate, we all know it. Everything needs to be in balance. There needs to be a broader ecosystem where humans and plants and animals and, and living and education, everything, all those different 
different ecosystems uh, have a role and are in balance with each other. So how can we make balance the knotweed in the cities? We can. I, I think I think at the end we can. If we stop the, the, the rapid spread, uh, and we all have a role here, not just the municipality, but also people who live here, and also uh, 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 the big, uh, uh, you know, like the railway uh, systems or we all have a role here, but we cannot keep on putting money in it. We need to make a balanced ecosystem with, with enough uh, 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 cooperation, competition. competition. Yeah, but it will need many years, I'm afraid. Yeah. I, I heard a very nice story last week about uh, in Dutch, I know it only in Dutch, Kantelpunt. And it was a story about the green ant that uh, years ago invaded uh, still standing water. And then they made the research and they found out that they could remove the fish and then the small water fleas, they were able to filter the water again. And in some time the problem was over, but there were Cantal point, I found it very point. crucial. Tipping point. So, huh? Turning point. Tipping okay. point. Oh, tipping point. Tipping point. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and that's something that's small, but you can uh, look at it with a bigger, bigger hole. No, it was the moment where, where a chair falls down, you know? Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, yeah but that's what well, needs to happen in, need the, in, in the whole urban environment. I think we need to research or working together to find that focal point and then you can spread it through us and, and yeah, we can uh, work, work out. I have to say we may start with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd like to add to this that I don't think we have all knowledge yet. I think there is still a lot that we can investigate um, and again the solution of today may not be the solution of the future. Um, and, and hearing this discussion, um, I, you know, I was just talking to two people from the public who also studied in Wageningen, and, and I rem I, it just reminds me of the fact that when I, quite a while ago, went to university, it was a very disciplinary way of being taught. So the simple species, the clean uh, cities, the, the, the only grass in the... Um, Lins um, uh, bodies next to the roads, um, and 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 that is changing, fortunately, because it's a great benefit that we now have flowering species along the roads, etc., etc. And it's really improving, um, yeah, the, the the work that pollinators are doing, and we need them for our food. Um, but I do also think that there is maybe, um, and maybe this is again. <laughs> Controversial. Maybe there is a limit to what how the human brain can think forward into different scenarios. There is so much we don't know. There's so much we don't know about the underground life. What bacteria? You mentioned it already. We're looking for one single because we know it. We know how to look for it. But there are, and we call them the microbiome, which is sort of the interplay between different species, not only in the soil but also on the plants and also on humans. We have a huge microbiome carrying with us all the time in our guts, on our, in, on our skin. Um, and so that kind of um, part of nature, let's say, can also bring a lot of answers as to why is it that over here the Japanese monkey does create a problem and over there it doesn't. And we just don't have all the answers yet. So um, I would hope that what the public takes away from today that also is that you know, we are sometimes thinking, ah, what do we do? Um, but let's keep, it, let's keep going, let's keep investigating, let's try to keep finding out, and let's remain curious and in, a, in a holistic way. Uh, and, and not thinking we 
need one solution, and then we solve it all. Uh, let's move on to the next problem. Um, because the one solution might create another problem again. And, and so and, and I think the balance, uh, what the IT says, is very important. This session was not just a discussion. <laughs> I will come to you again now. <laughs> you, seem, you seem really to, to, to agree on the point that it needs to be holistic. We have to change the way we look at invasive uh, species kind of language. But also we have to uh, try all these different approaches. And I think uh, we will agree that uh, working together and sharing all these insights today has been really insightful. So that, that, well, I was not uh, prepared for that, but you were going to change that. I, I just, I really, so maybe as a, as a uh, I really like a po poetic line, so which I want to share with you, by Remco Kampert. So I'm first to read it in Dutch. Totally the time where onkruid niet gedijen mag. So deadly the garden where weeds are not allowed to grow. And I, so I think, I like, I like the fact that we have weeds. I like the fact that human control is not uh, something absolute. And, and we've seen that human control is not absolute. We're managing the problem, right? And I, I like that fact that uh, nature sometimes throws itself at us in a weedy form. I like the fact that we can still find weeds in the urban in the urban areas. And I think also, maybe we should also maybe try to incorporate, which is of course impossible to do. We can't interview not weed itself. But uh, uh, I think not weed is not complaining. I think they're doing well. Uh, I think they like the fact that that Siebel guy was quite infatuated with, with them. And uh, so maybe we should also include that a little bit in, in the sense that maybe it's also nice that it's doing well. Finally, it's plants, wild plant species that's doing well. He brought us together. Brought us, to, brought us together, produced this beautiful, beautiful artwork. But I also say, it's, it's really, a, I walked past it. And also, there's a booklet for people who are interested, definitely have a have a look at that, it was new to me as well, so I appreciate that as well. Yeah. It's not really disagreeing though. <laughs> still not, still not. Does so anyone, one of you, want to add to that as the last concluding uh, argument? Before one, one more question, uh, I would say we, we could include it and, and uh, look at the positive sides, but we must not forget the threat that's boxing at this moment still. So it's a little bit too early to say, yay, let's uh, bring it on and uh, plant the thing on the On the website, there is also one positive thing about this plan, instead, instead of all negative things, on the, on the municipality website. And I would like to write it, or maybe people from the okay. guy like to write it. Just one positive thing about this Tomorrow plan. is another day. The mouth and microphone, please. Uh, <laughs> There's a whole bunch of drinks waiting for us. And we can go continue in the sun and, and talk. Uh, tomorrow is the second day of the symposium where we focus on enjoying knotweed, tasting it, making stuff with it, uh, uh, really knowing it. Uh, actually, I think one of the, the main reasons for the horrible spread of the current knotweed infested barren and, and disruptive grounds is, is actually due to a lack of understanding of this plant and a lack of understanding of ecology in general, rather than something that, um, no? But not no, it's not about not knowing, it's not knowing what you
jullie gaan kopen of niet kopen. Dus je gaat terug naar je bos, ga kijken waar die Duitse klok staat, die graaf in die rond, want vaak staat dat op slagstof. En ze belden mij terug en zeggen inderdaad, ik heb daar onder die Duitse klok slagstof gevonden. Dus Japanse Duitse klok heb ik een avond in de komen. Thanks for that beautiful Chinese word. Yes, it's a secret disposal of sorry. Illegal disposal. Anyway, tomorrow we have a whole day. Now we're going to have a drink. Thank you, Noel, for sharing this discussion. Thank you, Yip and your team for organizing this beautiful event. that it's not about no feet at all, it's about understanding our environment, our ecology better, and it's not this single organism that's so interesting, it's what we can learn from what the adventure that we, we are having it with no feet over the past 150 years, and lots of other organisms, visible and invisible, that we are affecting with our practices, and that we should understand maybe a bit more deeply not only plants, also fungi, maybe also humans. Um, so, uh, have a nice day, and see you tomorrow. Bring a friend, and thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. the bar, there's a bar, and we're offering you a drink. Yeah. Here.